Hey Roamers, I'm Jamie. I'm Linda. And this is Roaming with Rosie. On our last episode, we introduced you to Port Aransas, Texas, which is across the bay from Corpus Christi. This week, we're sharing a few more surprises from Port A. This place has got to be on your Texas bucket list. The Gaff is the definition of a dive bar, laid back, affordable, and friendly. From a distance, the scene outside the Gaff was a college-age bunch. We were relieved to see as we got closer, that was actually for the party bar next door to the Gaff. Instead, the gaff had a much different crowd. Like, if you're an old pirate or an old wench, you'd fit right in. With that, we felt welcome. None of these modern things like paying with your phone or even credit cards. It's a very simple establishment that takes cash. There's an ATM in the corner of the place. This place has a huge selection of beer and a simple menu with pizzas being the main feature. And it's dog friendly. We were here for the main event belt sander races. That's right, and they're held on the second and fourth Saturday of every month. By the way, if you don't have your own souped up belt sander, the gaff has several you can use. We grabbed some refreshments, found ourselves a seat, and made some new friends. Like any major sporting event, it starts with the national anthem. Then it's off to the races. This will be a best two out of three race with the winner moving on to the winner's division and the loser going inside and by themselves to the beer, pizza, or juicy, or whatnot. Lorde Low Life in lane one, Brandon in lane two. Fingers crossed. <laughs> All right, are my line judges ready? Drivers, are you ready? We'll go when the light turns green. And Brandon. Drivers, are you ready? We'll go when the light turns green. All right, Sandstorm in lane one, Brandon in lane two. Line judges up and ready. Drivers, are you ready? We'll go when the light turns green. And Sandstorm takes the win and he'll go on to the championship. Brandon, you stick around. He'll be racing for third place and a piece of the money five. And he's big. Yeah, it's a big sand. Huh? There should be a handicap. <laughs> well, you can see he's using, he's using skateboard wheels on the top of Taking over the reins of Octopunk, her favorite food is spaghetti, and she loves the color gray. Darren with the Fifi's birthday. Favorite food is beer. Ready. Drivers, are you ready? Uh, you want an autograph for Brandon? 
We enjoyed riding our bikes all around Port A for shopping and sightseeing. Port Aransas lies along the Great Texas Birding Trail. There you'll find the Leona Bell Turnbull Birding Center. There were some serious birders and photographers here. It was fascinating to hang back and observe the patience they demonstrate. As we continued down the elevated boardwalk, we began to see lots of water birds along a huge freshwater marsh. We saw heron and egrets, cormorants, shorebirds, and pink roseate spoonbills. That's the Port Aransas city bird. The importance of staying on the 750 foot long elevated wooden boardwalk was emphasized with the sighting of boots. This big old guy was possibly enjoying his afternoon digestion period. They're going right into the trap. This mama was leading her babies right into the mouth of Boots. As you can tell, I couldn't keep my camera on what was about to happen. I thought it was going to turn into an episode of Wild Kingdom. Fortunately, we're not equipped with the type of cameras, lenses, and mostly patience necessary to photograph these birds. We did capture this entertaining egret trying to catch his lunch. As wonderful as this free park is, we must warn you that it shares space with the city's water treatment plant. We don't know if the odor is the same every day. We can just tell you that it kept us from spending much more time over the lagoon area. Because Mustang Island is located in the central flyway, the area boasts hundreds of bird species, both permanent residents as well as thousands of migrant birds who consider this a perfect rest stop. The total preserve consists of four protected sites within proximity to each other. There's a link for the Port Aransas Nature Preserve in the description. Beach camping and boondocking is allowed in several areas of Mustang and Padre Island. It's considered beach parking and requires an annual permit that costs just $12. With that, you can stay up to three nights within a three-week period. We planned to stay longer than that max time allowed, plus the almost constant wind in April was blowing fine sand over everything. It reaffirmed our decision to camp on the other side of the dunes. Our original plan had been to be in Florida at this time. However, diesel prices in April forced us to stay in South Texas instead. We had no reservations in the area beyond our first two nights, but we made the best of it and ended up beach hopping between several public campgrounds for a few weeks. Our bikes had not been covered while we were down here because we were using them so much. Prior to being here, we'd been on Magnolia Beach for two weeks. Pretty much at this point, everything on that bike that wasn't painted was covered in rust. It clearly was going to take some time to repair. It was an inexpensive bike in the first place, so labor alone wouldn't be worth the price. We did some research, located an organization that repaired and gave bikes to kids who wouldn't have them otherwise, and brought the bike to them. We just assumed that stainless steel would have been used on outdoor equipment. After another few days down here, we noticed pretty much every metal thing we owned suffered from the moist air and constant blowing sand. Hey guys, we didn't go anywhere yesterday. We worked all day yesterday and literally only walked around a little bit. So the car has been sitting for maybe two days, maybe a little longer, and it is covered in salt. Also our brakes are groaning on the car already. So we were headed out 
but now we gotta stop and clean off all the windows. Here's what we're dealing with. Can't even see Dexter in there. The salt and the rest are really something down here. So we're been down here for three weeks and we're taking this opportunity to at least rinse everything down. One of the best things about our life now is that for the most part we control our time. Even though we're not retired fully yet and both have work to do, neither of us has to live by the clock anymore. It took us a little while to catch on to that, so now we can choose the least popular times to see and do interesting things. We discovered that heading out to the beach shortly after sunset on weekdays was the best time and the quietest time to see more of the amazing seabirds that hang out here and to watch them interact with each other. Life can be very stressful. We often unconsciously try to protect ourselves from constant tensions. Many of us are survivors of something, and that's especially evident in the nomad community. But living this way can be very healing. It takes some time to stop following the clock and enjoy the moments. After just a few months on the road, I'm feeling the changes already. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Roaming with Rosie and will share it with your friends and family. If you're new to this channel and want to see more videos like this, just click the subscribe button and the bell so you'll be notified each time we put out a new video. And we love hearing from you and invite you to leave a comment down in this video's description. There's also links down there for more information on the places we visited in this episode, as well as discounts for things we use and approve of. We do sometimes get a small commission when you use our approved links to make a purchase at no additional cost to you. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time. See ya.